Hello everyone. Today we're going to be making a multi-part disk image with FTK Imager. I'm using FTK Imager 3118 uh, and I already have my, my 2 gigabyte USB uh, stick um, plugged in and already detected by the system, um, which in, in a real case we would already have uh, used a write blocker, either a software write blocker or a hardware write blocker um, on our disk. Um, so I already have everything set up. I already have FTK Imager open. Now we just need to add um, the, the disk and, and point FTK Imager at it. So one way to do that is to go to File and Create Disk Image. And I have a few options here. I want to select, in this case, Physical Disk Image, and this will create a copy of the entire disk. And this is normally what we want to create whenever we're doing digital forensics. Um, with physical disk image or physical disk, physical drive, um, we get the entire contents of the disk, including some space that you might not get if you were just looking for, for example, partitions. So the next option you can select is logical drive, um, and that is actually the partitions um, going for, in this case, it might be like D drive or a E drive, something like that. So if I'm going for logical drives, these are normally what we call partitions on the disk, and I'm potentially missing quite a bit of information. Um, and if I do physical drive, then I'm collecting all of the information from this disk. Now we also have the option to copy an image file. If we select image file here, then we are essentially just making a bit for bit copy of um, the image file that we're putting into it. Uh, we can also copy the, the contents of a folder and uh, multiple CDs, DVD drives if you have this device. So, um, like I said, we almost always go for physical drive uh, if we can. Um, if possible, uh, select physical drive because there you would get a lot more information during later parts of your analysis. So I'm going to click Next. Now that I'm in select drive, I'm going to scroll down and my physical drive one, I know that this is my disk. Uh, it's the right size. It also says flash disk USB device, uh, two gigabytes. Um, make sure you're aware of how big, I mean, you should, you should know how big your suspect disk is. Um, in this case, two gigabytes, that's, um, it's pretty easy to tell what my, my suspect device is, but sometimes it's rather confusing. If I had a suspect device that was 64 gigabytes, then I might have a hard time differentiating between drive zero and drive one. Normally drive zero is uh, the, the drive that's actually built into uh, your forensic workstation, but your forensic workstation might have multiple drives in it. So um, just make sure you are, are very well, well aware um, which device is the flash disk. If you don't know, the easiest way is to open up FTK Imager before uh, you plug in the suspect device and see how many devices you actually have. So how many physical drives do we have connected? Um, and I would only see one. Uh, once I plug in a suspect disk, then I would see this physical drive one show up and I'm, I'm listing two devices and I can see the size. Um, so make sure you are aware which device is actually the, the suspect device. Then I click finish, and then it's asking me for image destinations. And we could get in a long discussion about um, how to manage uh, your images, how to manage um, how to manage all of, uh, I guess, the case, the case documents that you could create. Um, I think I'll talk about that in another video, but right now we need to select where we actually want to save the image that we are creating of the physical disk. So whenever we click Add, the first option that we get is the image type that we're interested in. Um, the most common types right now, the most common that I see is actually E01. Um, this is what most most investigators are using because most investigators tend to use um, in case, at least the ones that I work with. Um, I quite like raw uh, DD images because I use a lot of tools that can't process E01s directly. Um, with raw images, you can use a lot of other tools to do some very fast processing and, and write your own scripts and things like that. Um, some of that can be done with E01, but it's a little bit more complicated. Um, 
AFF, also a very interesting format. Um, not used as much as I, I would expect, but um, but yeah. Um, and then Smart, I think, not really used much anymore unless you um, have just been using it for a long time. Basically, everyone now is using E01 and potentially RAW, um, and then sometimes AFF. So for now, uh, I'm going to select RAW, and next, and then case number. Now, with raw disk images, none of this metadata is stored within the image itself. Only the data from the disk is stored inside the disk image. If we select E01, this metadata is stored in the header of the E01 image file. Um, the E01 image file is um, has a, a, a different data structure um, than a raw image format. So this uh, metadata here, since we've selected uh, a raw disk image, this will be actually saved in a different file other than the disk image file. So case number, we'll just say this is 001. Evidence number, 001. Um, this would be, yeah. So this is uh, essentially what disk, uh, what case, and potentially what disk in what computer. Um, so if we have multiple computers, um, are we, how are we going to treat uh, each disk inside that computer? That needs to be thought out beforehand. Again, case management. Uh, a unique description. So let's say uh, USB blue. Um, any serial numbers or any other information you say you see on it. Um, red LED, something like that. Uh, examiner. I'll just put Joshua and then any other notes. So you should fill this out, um, especially especially in a real case, you should fill this out as well as possible. Um, make sure, uh, even if you are running a consulting company or something like that, make sure you do have case numbers. Um, that way you can keep everything straight. And the evidence number in cases. This really comes in handy um, whenever you're going back and, and trying to figure out what cases are what. Uh, unique description. Uh, this is also not only for you, but other for other people that might be looking at your case notes. Um, they might not know which USB this this particular one is, and if you say USB blue with a red LED, well, that um, potentially <laughs> potentially um, helps in identification. And then the examiner, basically, who should we go back to, and any other notes. So I normally fill these all out um, quite thoroughly whenever I'm doing this for a real case. So next. Now we select where we actually want to save the disk image. So I'm going to click Browse. And I have normally set up um, a Cases folder on, on a separate disk. Uh, just for this tutorial, I'm going to put it uh, on the desktop and inside the Test, test Image folder. Um, just for convenience, I would never do this in, in a real case at all. Um, I normally have a separate drive specifically for uh, case images um, and I would definitely never put it on my desktop anyway um, and then the folder name so normally I, I, I do exhibit um, whatever the exhibit is so if I for example this is the first computer and I'm getting a hard drive out of the first computer the exhibit number might be 001 and if it's the first hard drive out of that computer it might also be 01 so the exhibit number would be, for example, 001, which is the exhibit, the computer that I, that I have, and then uh, the first drive or the first, first storage device in that. So 001, 01. And that lets me know, OK, I'm looking at this exhibit, whatever that is, and I know that there's some sort of storage device in there, and this is the first one. Um, you can, uh, I mean, as long as you're consistent with your naming, um, basically, we're just looking for some consistency. There are a few different standards out there that are quite nice. Um, some involve dates and things like that. But for this uh, for this tutorial, I'm just looking at exhibit and disk number. Uh, the image fragment size. This is where we we specify how big we want each fragment to be. And my disk right now is two gigabytes. So if I set this at uh, 1500. In 1500 megabytes, then that's almost my entire disk. I'll get one quite large uh, part and one very small part. So I'm going to go ahead and move this down to 500. Now, for a real case, I would probably be moving it, either keep it the same or move it up. Um, normally, whenever we're doing fragmentation or we're splitting up the disk image, uh, we're doing it to store it someplace else, like a DVD, for example. 
Fragment size specifies how big each part of, of the disk image should be. So then we click finish and we see that we've selected the, the image type, the name, the location. Um, we can add another location or another, um, another format if we want. Um, sometimes that's very useful for, for example, saving to your local disk as well as a uh, copy to a server, or if you want to make a raw plus E01 um, formats, things like that. Um, we use it sometimes. Okay. And then we select verify images after they've been created. Okay. Um, and I'm going to leave those other those others unselected. Okay. So then we click start. Okay, so now our disk image has been created, and one of the most important things to look at are these computed hashes uh, at the end. Uh, because we clicked verify, uh, verify just means that FTK is going to make uh, hashes, uh, MD5 and SHA-1 hashes, of our disk image um, and make sure that they're actually matching. Um, so in this case, computed hashes uh, basically starts with CA02435 and reported hash CA02435, so okay, they match, that's very, very good, right? If we see something that doesn't match, um, somehow the data has, has, has gotten corrupted or changed while um, you were imaging. If there's um, a difference here, then uh, you need to check your setup and see how that possibly could have changed and most likely create a new image because those need to match. Um, so then we click close. Um, we can also click image summary, but I'm just going to close. Image created successfully, how long it took. Um, a little bit longer than I expected. So in this case, for two gigabytes, if it took 13, uh, 15 minutes, I would probably be looking for a different way to connect the, the device um, to try to speed it up a little bit. So we click close. And now if I click, um, if I go into the test image folder, you see this multi-part image. And we can see that they're basically 500, about 500 uh, megabytes each. If we go into here, properties, 500 megabytes each for each image. And it is a multi-part image. So we have the extension 001, then 002, then 003, 4, etc. Um, so for normal normal disks, um, depending on depending on what size you you chose to split them. Um, you might have many different images in here. Um, this uh, notepad or text document we have here um, with the same name as the first part um, is the actual report. So if we double click on that, then you see our unique description. So the, the description of the physical device, the examiner who imaged it, um, evidence number, case number, uh, version of uh, FTK imager that was used, um, sometimes very important. Uh, information about the disk itself, um, so it's a flash disk USB device, a device serial number. Um, device serial number is not on the printed on the outside of this particular USB stick, so detecting that automatically is, is very nice. Um, and again, the most probably the most important parts of this report are the checksums. So MD5 hash and SHA-1 hash, um, now we have a copy of those hashes. We should be documenting them um, somewhere else. Make sure that we have copies of those and that um, those hashes do not change uh, from, from now until the time that we go to court. Um, so the judge or prosecutors uh, should be able to verify our disk image. Uh, the time that I imaged, again, important for um, our documentation that's going to court, uh, where we stored 
uh, the image and how many parts there were, what the file names were. All of that is very important um, for prosecutors to know how are you actually dealing with the suspect data? Can we trust this suspect data? Everything is about establishing um, trust of your process here. Um, so in this case, they would probably question, why did you put this on the desktop? Um, so that's why I say I would never uh, copy this to the desktop because I'm most likely going to have to move it from the desktop to some legitimate place. Um, I normally have it on uh, an external D drive that I use specifically for the case that I'm working on at the time. So it's kind of a cleared off disk. Um, right. So now we have a multi-part disk image. We have hashes or checksums for the overall uh, disk image, which means all of this data combined, uh, if we were to hash all of the data combined, then we should get this hash value. Okay, so what we want to do now, uh, we have all of these uh, disk image parts, and we do have a report um, that has all of the data overall. Um, if we combined all of the data again, we should get these hash values. Um, but that... Um, uh, what I'm what I'm interested now in is actually the the hash values of each of these parts as well. Um, so that way, if, if one of the parts gets uh, modified in some way, um, then I can know which one has been changed and potentially um, uh, can use the rest of the data even if only one part has been modified. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this, but um, uh, I tend to make sure that I know the hashes of all of these. And one way to do that. Uh, with FTK Imager is to go to File and Add Evidence Item again, and then select Contents of a Folder. So Contents of a Folder, and then Browse, and select Test Image, OK, and click Finish. Now we've, we've added all of the images from the Test Image folder. So we see all of our parts here. Okay. So I'm going to select each of these parts. And if you right click on those, then we can export file hash list. Okay. So um, I'm going to export the file hash list into desktop test image. And I'm going to say part, I'm going to call it part hashes. Part hashes, and I'll just say CSV file. Okay. So save. And now it's creating the hashes of each of those parts. Creating the hashes of each of the parts. Okay, so now I have these part hashes. If I click on it, let's say open with notepad, then I get the MD5 uh, hash value, the SHA hash value, and the file names um, for each of these parts. So now, not only do I have the overall hash value for the entire disk image, but each of the separate parts I also have MD5 and SHA-1 hashes for. Um, this is this is useful for a number, number of reasons, but the main reason that I do this is um, imagine that, uh, for example, this hash value for the first part uh, got changed. If, if I didn't have the hash value of each of these pieces, then the overall hash value for the disk image would uh, be incorrect. I wouldn't be able to verify the disk image anymore, and I wouldn't know where the error was, right? So in this case, I know now what the hash value of each of the parts are. So if I see that one of the hash values changes, then I can still potentially use, I can still potentially use, for example, um, if I know that these three hash values, uh, these four hash values are still valid, then I can potentially still use uh, parts two, three, four, and five of the disk image and, and still do some analysis. Um, obviously, I would still have to just uh, find out what caused um, the first part to change, but at least I would have an idea of where my data uh, changed and, and um, at the end of the day, this all comes back to um, how much can we trust the data, right? The more the more hashes, the more verification you do on your data, uh, the more court is likely to trust and accept um, what you have, um, what you're submitting. 
Uh, so that's that's it. Um, in this in this lesson, we created a multi-part disk image with reporting and verification. We got the hash value of the overall disk image and verified that it was correct. The verification um, report is down at the bottom, and if you uh, go back and do another verification report, it will keep adding verification reports to the bottom of this report. Um, so we have a multi-part disk image. If we combine these back together, we would get the overall disk image with the same hash value. And we also have the, part, uh, the hashes of each part of each section of the disk image that we created. Um, and that lets us uh, verify each part is correct, not only the overall disk image. Um, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, subscribe for more.